Hello and welcome to Script Tonight Reacts. I'm Script Tonight. Today we're going to be watching season two, episode seven of Fargo. And this episode is called Did You Do This? No, you did it. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's called Did You Do This? No, you did it. Which, I mean, could be the Gerhards at this point because all shit is going down. And no one's clear on what's going on. I mean, Kansas City too, because Mike Milligan's gone rogue. Twice. <sighs> but no, I think it's the Gerhards. Um, I can imagine Floyd saying it to Simone. You know, did you do this? Because Simone has been dobbing the family in, principally because her dad's a shitbag. But, I mean, that doesn't mean the whole family deserves to go up in a puff of smoke. No, last episode was fantastic. We had Carl Weathers just knocking it right out of the park. I think, I think there's something like uniquely wonderful about watching someone be brave when they're absolutely terrified and they really understand what the stakes are and they don't think it's gonna pay off. And the way that Nick Offerman acted, like, his performance as Carl Weathers last episode was just out of this world. It was out of this world. I loved every second of it. I, I very nearly had to put a full reaction up on Patreon because I didn't want to cut any of his scenes. And we really needed to cut some of the scenes down to get the thing in, in two pieces. So respect. We also, you know, the same with Patrick Wilson as Lou Solverson, it's like an, a different kind of courage and Lou's is kind of a more like... I think Lou really believes it's going to turn out okay and I think that's the difference and in some ways you could argue that makes Carl Weathers braver because he's doing the right thing not believing that it's necessarily going to pan out but the way it looks is Lou Solverson is kind of the, the tougher of the two. He remained incredibly calm, very focused, achieved his mission, which was to make sure that, you know, Ed was protected and not murdered and that Charlie stayed in custody. And by the end of that episode, at least, he had accomplished those two missions. Ed had pissed off back to um, his house with Peggy, but what are you gonna do? So that's kind of the sort of the police. Hank survived, thank God. Um, just got smacked in the face by Hansy. I really appreciated the restraint. I, I cannot watch Hank die. Don't spoil me. Don't tell you, oh, he, don't worry, he doesn't. Or, oh shit, you know, is no spoilers, please. I'd, I'll find out by the end of the season. But I don't want Hank to die. That will destroy me. Over to... The Gerhards we've touched upon, but Bear stood down. Basically, Bear and Dodd went on missions. Dodd's mission was to, I think, take out Ed and Peggy. Well, at least take out Peggy, who was at home. And Bear's mission was primarily to re get Charlie released. And s kind of the secondary mission was to make sure that Ed was taken out. Neither accomplished their mission. Dodd got his ass kicked, as did all of his men, apart from Hansy, who was the only one who did his job, by Peggy. And I loved it. And do you know what? I've got to say, you know, I think we were worried at the beginning of the season that we were going to have, like, a Lester Nygaard situation with Ed and Peggy, particularly the way that Peggy appeared at the beginning, sort of cold and weird. And she's still weird, but I don't think she's cold at all. I think she has a lot of feelings and complex feelings. And they are so tough, those two. They look ridiculous. But at this point, you've got to give it to them. I mean, Ed has, has been in man-to-man -man combat now, what, at least twice over and come out of it the better arm. And he's never seen war. He's just been, you know, doing his butcher's business. And he's gone up against, 
you know, crime family and people who have been up to this for shenanigans forever. And he's held his own. So loving Ed and Peggy, like really love it. Loving them so much, I want them to be okay. So I think that'll kind of round. I'm not even gonna go into Kansas City because Kansas City, you're fucking dead to me. I honestly, I, I'm so dumb. Can I'm really clear that I'm on the side of the Gearhearts, Ed and Peggy, even though they're on opposite sides. I reckon we can figure it out. So I think going into this last three episodes, we've got seven, eight, nine, and ten. We've got four episodes to go, and at this point. So the people that I would like to see die would be Dodd is number one. Dodd, I really need Dodd to die during this season. That would be amazing. I've also quite liked to see Mike Milligan die. I know he's a fan favourite and he is terrifying and I don't want him to die until the very end but this guy is a fucking psychopath he should not be in the world even a fictitious one so he needs to go i need him to die also if he's still alive i don't think ed and peggy will be alive and i need ed and peggy so i choose ed and peggy i need ed and peggy to live i need Drew Silverson to live that i know i get i really want Hank to live though and what worries me is we know we've been told already by lou and by Ben Schmidt in the future, that there are so many bodies at the end of this, they're literally stacked up to a second story height. I don't know how that figures. I don't know if he was literally talking that there were like two floors of building and everyone was dead in them, or if literally there were that many dead, if like, they were piled up. But either way, that's a lot of collateral damage if our core characters all make out alive apart from like two so i'm excited i think this is gonna be great um happy really excited to get into this episode and find out what happens next so let's have at it and that there's a word for that Who's this? let's talk them through you understand are they about to shoot this man in the, f in the head they, the powers that be, they need to know. Oh, shit! Gerhardt to killing people sometimes. Got it. Oh, two died? Oh, no. Yeah, that was the guy who was on the, um... We waited. <laughs> I don't like funerals. Nobody likes funerals. I like funerals. We got ups and downs. Tell me. Go see to lunch. I'm Fuck off! I can hear. Yeah, but you can't be trusted to not gab, Simone. South Dakota's turn. Which Bear now tells me is where they got the president's faces up on the side of a rock. So we should get that back. <laughs> oh, man. Nothing from Hansi? Nothing. Two days. Yeah. It's not like my dad's the shark in that movie. We're gonna need a bigger boat. He shits and sleeps. <sighs> I swear I thought your father was the problem. His nature, and towards <sighs> women. But you're two of the same. They're porcupines. You're half crazy. I was looking for a fight. This family deserves the ground. <sighs> she needs to go, honestly. I 
best end. It's funeral day. I know. We waited till the dirt settled, but now I need you to come with us. Oh shit. Where's your brother? Oh Jesus. <laughs> I just bet. It's just so nice watching Lou Solverson walk away. Phone. Take a message. You gonna wanna take this one, bro. Crick says he knows what that is. Kill him. Take a message. Bear could care less. Sorry to hear about Otto. They shot him in his own home. These Kansas City hoes and shizer. Children sleeping upstairs. Savages. My wife passed last summer. We're up in Brainerd visiting my sister. Last thing she said to me, do you smell toast? Burnt toast. Dr. Penfield, I can smell burnt toast. To the street. Different roads, same destination. The butcher of Laverne killed my boy. Anna Witter's from Kansas City. Oh, I've known Ed Blumquist since short pants. If he's working for the Kansas City mob, I'll, I'll cut off my toe. <laughs> What's what they call those Russians? Sleeper agents. I'm saying you think you know someone, but what do you know? Fuck. Hey, Don't! Here the other day. How about you help us out? You know these Kansas City fellas. Point us in the right direction there. You know, weaknesses, indiscretions. Give us something actionable, and maybe we make this whole uh, northern expansion unpalatable. Snitch. Well, you said yourself, hard to be simple in times of complication. I mean, at this point, what has she got to lose? It's all out war. I'm not over this since the big Lebowski. This is the bummer, man. Oh my god, state of this one. When they killed Bulo, you said this Gearheart outfit was a stuffed shirt. Now I'm standing here with blood on my socks. I can handle it. The hell you say? Braverman stood for you, said he's not like the other darkies. This one's smart, capable. Sure. But that is not what I'm seeing. You got two days, then I'm sending the Undertaker. The Undertaker. Yes, sir. Oh, shit. Thank you, sir. That does not sound good. You son of a bitch. You, ah, oh, son of a bitch! What are you doing? Freedom, that terrible word inscribed upon the chariot of the storm. Oh. What? You could have killed me shooting up the house or grandma. She oh. doesn't oh. care, you stupid woman. Would you say you're her favorite? Who? I made her familias. In my experience. Fuck. Firstborn grand. She's always the shine on the apple. Oh, God. Shit. She's all awesome. I'm speechless. I did not expect... Go Floyd! Now that was some decent strategy. This, this one however... Pulls. I just got... How deluded is this young woman? 
she has she clearly has absolutely no idea who she's dealing with in Mike Milligan. You know, right? I, you know what I know. We're sitting there thinking you. She's acting like he's like her boyfriend. He's got genuine feelings for her. He and he gives two shits about her opinion of him, and he clearly doesn't. I think she might well be dead now if they hadn't come in. Dead or a hostage, I don't know. But, you know, the Gerhards have delivered a lot of death. I think I think she could well have been dead in an, in an attempt to break Floyd. So Floyd is like flanked them by snitching to the police by the looks of it. I don't know for certain because we haven't seen her like a confirmation scene, but we knew that she had a decision to make. She probably guessed where Simone was going or she's been following her this whole time. Brilliant. Brilliant. I really did not expect Schmidt and um and Solverson to be <laughs> at the door at that point. But yeah. Wow. Play. I'm a big girl. You're really not. Oh. Idiot. Well done, then. If I'm going to the noose, I'm going. But I'm done lying down for men. Ugh. I love oh. the um infinity oh. shot with the mirror. phrase manifest destiny yeah but see here's the thing i own two pairs of shoes a summer pair and one for winter we're not meant to have more than we can handle that's what i mean you're saying capitalism is a problem no greed what happened let's just get this over with huh? <laughs> Just a man. He works in a factory. One day the boss gets it in his mind that this man is stealing from him. So, every night at the gate, the guard searches wheelbarrow. But they never find anything. Pat him down. Oh, they do that. Strip him naked. Nothing. So, he's not stealing. Of course he is. Wheelbarrows. Thank you. That's right. He's stealing wheelbarrows. What? My point is, sometimes the answer is so obvious, you can't see it because you're looking too hard. You see, we can't leave because we're the future. We're the past. Just don't be offended next time if I don't say hello before I shoot. Oh, that shot though! Like, zoo. Betsy! Fucking love Betsy! If Hansi is in this fucking house, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose her. Oh shit! Jeez. <sighs> Carl, weather that is a good way to get yourself shot. You can fight me on are we gonna stay the night, or you and the kid could grab a plate and see why they call me the breakfast king of Loyola. I love her. I love you, Betsy. This is brilliant. I'm so glad they're there. I 
feel like they'll be okay together. I mean, sometimes a girl just wants to bust a nut, you know? Be quiet. Be quiet. How come you don't ask about Charlie? What? Quiet. Ask about Floyd and your dad, but not about Charlie. Well, I mean, yeah, sure. I don't give two shits How's about it? Charlie. Stay back. Where are we going? What is happening? Come. It wasn't against you. What I did. I didn't mean for... Doesn't matter what you mean. It's what you do. Shit. She just has no plan, this girl. Come on, Simone, impress me with something. What is Bear's actual plan here? Is it just to kind of walk her out into the middle of nowhere and then abandon her? I don't... I can't see him killing her. Oh, my sweet summer child. I can help. They trust me. No, they don't. Grandma wanted to negotiate, but Dad... Dad wouldn't let her. He did this. I'm the victim here. What was I supposed to do? No! Kneel down now. Shit! No! Oh! I thought she was gonna make it out somehow. Bear. Don't. Please. Please. I can't even walk. Bear, don't. It's not. We're family. Bear. Oh, fuck. None of us are family anymore. <gasps> no! <laughs> Please! No! Hush now. Oh no. He's gonna do it. He's gonna do it. Oh shit! It's already done. Oh fuck no! for you again. What guy? Says he knows dad, where he is. Oh. What did you say? I told him you were out. To the men here, they know. No. Kind of cold, don't you think? I would shut the fuck up. Why do people keep Open their mouths when they should be shutting them. What? Nothing. Family business. Not my place. 